moving out of Canada seems to be a new trend. There are so many videos out there where people say that they are leaving Canada due to XYZ reasons. So in this video, we will talk about the pros and cons of moving back to India. In the recent years, has the situation in Canada become so bad and has the life in India become so better that we should seriously think about moving back to India? It definitely makes sense if people are moving out of Canada, maybe to America, maybe for better job opportunities, better earning potential and better weather. But if people are moving back to India, if reverse migration is being talked about, then it becomes a different topic altogether. Being honest, most of the immigrants living in Canada would have certainly thought of moving back to India at some stage of their life here in Canada. Again, that might be due to any reason. So whether if you're an international student here on a work permit or a permanent resident or even a citizen, there are thoughts of going back to India. I've been living in Canada since 2017. This year, I had the opportunity to spend some time in India as well. I was there for more than a month. So in this video, I'll be covering most of the points, both about India and Canada. Instead of what you see daily on social media, we will talk about real life experiences, not just the bads, but the goods of both the places as well. So we will compare life in India and Canada based on several factors which matter to you. We'll start with job opportunities, cost of living. We'll talk about real estate, both renting and buying. We'll talk about the healthcare services. We will also talk about the environment and weather, the schooling for your kids. And probably the last point would be family, friends and festivities. If you want to jump to any of the particular section that matters to you more, you can actually use the time frame to that particular section of the video. So without further ado, let's just start with the first factor, job opportunities. If you are a recent graduate or even an experienced professional, you'd find difficulties in finding the right job for you. Here, I'm not even talking about international students looking for part-time jobs because finding the survival jobs is got very difficult. The number of jobs are very less and there's a huge number of international students out there who are looking for jobs. You can find tons of videos on TikTok where hundreds of people have lined up mostly international students for a job fair, for a Tim Hortons job, or maybe a warehouse or a restaurant job. The statistical data says that the unemployment rate is 6.4%, which is still higher, but on ground, I feel that the reality would be much more worse. Maybe there are some sectors which are doing good and some sectors which are not at all doing good. For example, if you try to look for a job in healthcare sector, because there is a healthcare crisis, there are plenty of jobs available, but of course you should be skilled enough. If you're looking for a trucking job, which means as a truck driver, relatively finding a job would be easier for you. But just in case, if you're looking for a job in IT, uh, on a managerial role, maybe a sales job, then it would be very difficult to find jobs for you, whether you're an experienced professional or a recent graduate. Forget about the international students who are looking for a part-time job. So that's the reality of Canada in 2024. But if you choose to immigrate to India, would it be any better for you? Would it be easier for you to find the jobs? So I would say that job opportunities are relatively better in India, but not in every sense. Let me explain that. If you are an experienced professional, if you immigrate back to India, then it might be easier for you to find a job. But if you're a recent graduate, then it might be very difficult for you to find a job even in India. Only in the last couple of months, we have seen some videos where hundreds and thousands of unemployed youth gathered just for a handful of jobs. Sums up the current situation. Air India had listed around 2,200 job vacancies. More than 25,000 job seekers gathered at Air India's office. And this is not an isolated situation. Last week, another video emerged from Gujarat. Hundreds of people were seen at a private company's recruitment drive. Unfortunately, many Indian students come to Canada just for the sake of immigrating. They don't come to reputed colleges or universities, which does not add too much to your resume. So just in case, if you're thinking 
that you have a slight edge over others because you have studied from an international college. Now in the world of social media, employers and recruiters are well aware about that. Even recent graduates from IITs are finding it difficult to find jobs in India. So how can you expect that you would easily get a good paying job in India? So guys, just to summarize, the situation of job opportunities in Canada is very bad in 2024. It is slightly better in India, but maybe for the experienced professionals, if you're a recent graduate and finding it very difficult to find a job in Canada, if you go back to India, don't expect it to be a cakewalk. Be ready for the struggles there as well. Okay, now let's talk about the next factor, which is cost of living. This is probably one of the biggest factors why many people who are even established in Canada want to leave Canada now. Living in Canada was already expensive, but in the last couple of years, things have got even more worse. Mostly driven by high gas prices, the food prices have gone high, and the housing as well. Now here it is interesting to talk about purchasing power parity, which means that if you have around $100,000 as an annual package in Canada, that would be equivalent to almost 19 lakh Indian rupees. And I guess in 2024, somebody who's an experienced professional who's living in India, it won't be difficult for them to get a 20 lakh annual package. So now when we are talking about India, you would definitely find the cost of living in India to be much cheaper than any Western nations. Canada is no exception. Now, of course, if you moved to Canada from India, let's say five years ago, and if you move back now, depending on the city you choose to live in India, the cost of living is going to be determined by that factor. For example, if you choose to live in cities like Mumbai, Bengaluru, Gurugram, you would feel that the cost of living has actually gone up. So I moved to Canada in 2017 and whenever I go back, I feel that things would probably be in the same price range, but I'm always astonished to see that the prices of almost everything has significantly shot up in India as well. While we're comparing the cost of living between India and Canada, India would definitely be much more cost efficient. But in case you're seriously trying to move back to India, you should definitely make sure that you know the prices of 2024. Almost everything has become unexpectedly expensive. Okay, now let's talk about the next factor, real estate. We'll talk both about buying and renting. Now the amount of money that you would shell out of your pocket, whether it is for renting or for monthly installments of your home, that would probably be the biggest expense for most of the people. Now, if you talk about buying a home, in the last five years, the home prices have seen at least 10% appreciation year on year. But you must have heard about the housing crisis in Canada, which is not going to resolve anytime soon, which means that there might be minor correction, but the house prices will continue to stay high. And similarly, the rents as well. Unfortunately, there's a similar story in India as well. Whenever I talk to any of my friends or family or relatives who have recently bought a new home or a property, the price almost every time is 1.2 CR, 1.8 CR or even higher than 2 CR. Now, of course, this depends on the location, the city and the particular location within that city. So in case if you're thinking of going back to India and purchasing a property, the real estate game in India has changed significantly in the past 4-5 years. Even if you think of renting in India, the prices have significantly gone up. But I would say that renting is probably a lot more affordable in India than what it is here in Canada. So gist of this story for real estate, if you're thinking of buying a property in Canada or in India, it would be equally difficult for you. But if you're actually thinking of renting, then in India, it would be slightly easier than here in Canada. Okay, now when we have talked about top three factors which affect our financial well-being, now let's talk about the weather and the environment. Now, this factor might not be the more interesting one, but it might be really important for some people just like me. One of the major reasons why I decided to move out of India was environment. I was living in Delhi NCR and you know about the situation of pollution in Delhi NCR. 
Unfortunately, in the last 10 years, despite multiple claims by central and the state government, the situation hasn't improved. It might have improved marginally, but that's not enough. Because as humans, the basic thing that we can expect from our governments is clean air and water. Unfortunately, that's not the case in large part of India. Of course, pollution is one problem. And then after that, you see a lot of other things. For example, there was news of water scarcity in Bengaluru. And personally, I had a similar experience in Gurugram back in 2016 and 17. However, India has definitely seen some major infrastructure upgrades in the last few years in terms of national highways being built, better connectivity. But every year after the rainfall, we still see the same problems, potholes, water logging, and recently we have seen some unnatural deaths because of that. So thankfully, this is one area where your life in Canada would still be a lot better. The difference would be huge. Now, many people will say that Canada has harsh weather climate. Of course, it's famous for its cold weather. Yes, that's definitely true. But living here for so long, I have now understood that it's not difficult to actually survive that weather. Yes, it's not very good. It's not a good experience, but then it's not difficult to survive that weather. Similarly, in India, we have seen long stretches of hot weather, especially this year, we have seen due to global warming or whatever reason, we have seen such hot conditions, which is also unbearable for people. So just like Canada has harsh winter conditions, depending on your location, you might face harsh hot wave in India. So if you decide to go back, you might want to choose your city carefully because there are some huge problems in India at the moment. For example, in Bengaluru, you always hear that problem of terrible traffic and then on top of it, now this water shortage as well. If you live in Delhi or NCR, then you would need to handle the heat wave and of course the extreme pollution as well. Of course, there might be other options, maybe Pune, maybe Hyderabad, maybe some other cities which are doing fairly better, but then it depends from one person to the other. Okay, now let's talk about the next factor, which is healthcare. Now, of course, you must have heard a lot of claims, good things and bad things about healthcare in Canada. So today I want to share some facts and my experience. Yes, Canada has got free healthcare, but everything which is free might not be that good, which is true in case of Canadian healthcare system as well. Yes, just in case if you have to visit a doctor or in my case, I had a minor surgery last year, it was all completely free of cost. But then if you have to wait in the emergency ward, you will feel that the Canadian healthcare system is completely broken. So that is one moment where you feel that the Indian healthcare system was much better because if you have the relevant resources, then in that case, you can get immediate treatment, which is super good in India. So yes, when it comes to Canadian healthcare system, the main problem that we face, there's a long wait, not just in emergency, but if you have to talk to a specialist doctor, you have to wait for months. So this is one problem, which is another serious concern for me and which might be a compelling factor for people to go back to India. Okay, now let's talk about the second last factor, which is schooling for your kids. Now this video has already been pretty long, so we'll try to keep the last two points pretty crisp and short. In Canada, you have free schooling for your kids. But when I was in India, talking to many people, they had a common concern, the super high school fees for their children. The school fee might be from 20 to 50,000 per month, depending from one school to the other. So this is one point where you might regret if you go back to India. And secondly, as I'm making this video, we are in mid of 2024 Paris Olympics and India has scored three bronze medals. Kudos to all those athletes who have been able to get as medals. But when you compare it with Canada, they have got 17 medals. So as of today, three medals for a country of 1.4 billion people and 17 medals from a country of 42 million people. Of course, most probably the athletes in both the countries put in the same amount of effort and dedication. But the major problem is red tapeism, bureaucracy, the bad infrastructure and facilities that are being provided to Indian athletes. So if you go back to India, don't expect these things to change overnight. Maybe 10 years, 15 years, 20 years down the line, these things might change. 
But yes, as there are pros and cons of living in one place, this might be one disadvantage of living in India. Okay, lastly, let's talk about the families and the festivities. Of course, this might be one reason for many people because after you move to Canada, then you realize that you miss your family a lot more. You miss your friends and relatives as well. During festivities, you miss India even more. Because what I've realized is that we as Indians have to pay a hefty amount just to reunite with our families. If you decide to travel to India at least every year, you would realize that the flight tickets have gone very expensive and whenever you decide to fly your parents, siblings or grandparents to Canada, first of all, the flight tickets are already high and on top of that, you need to pay for the health insurance as well, which is also very expensive. So again, the same story that a big part of your savings would go only to live with your family and friends. All right, guys, now when I've talked about many of these points, please let me know if I've missed any point or if you disagree with any of the points that I've discussed. Now when we have talked about many of these points, let's talk about the conclusion. For someone maybe who's struggling in Canada to find a relevant job, or maybe you have almost no chances of getting the permanent residency, and somehow you know that there is no hope as well. Life in India isn't bad at all. There's a difference between hustling and living miserably if your life is getting terrible in Canada, it may be a really good option to move back to India. But for everyone else, I think it is worth giving a shot maybe for a few more years. Remember the reason why you first immigrated to this country. There will be pros and cons of wherever you live in whichever part of the world. Because here we are comparing about Canada and India. Of course, there will be some points which you would favor in India and maybe some points which you would favor here in Canada. So depending on your life situations, you can actually take up that call. If you decide to live in Canada, there would be some pros and cons and same there in India as well. You must have heard about that quote, life is always greener on the other side. When you were living in India, you thought that life is so good in Canada. When you immigrate here, things would change for you for good. But now you might feel that you know, things have changed for you, but for bad. For most of the people, if you decide to go back, there would not be any more U-turns allowed in your life. I hope this video will help you to make that major decision in your life. If it has, then click the thumbs up button. Please, please, please subscribe to this channel because it helps us a lot while it is free of cost for you. Please put your comments in the comment section below and thanks a lot for watching this video.